So what exactly is going on in the brain when we get overcome by a trigger or anxiety attack? What you're feeling. Well, I'm sure that many of us are feeling the same things. We're experiencing lost focus insomnia, depression, anxiety, worry, and feeling overwhelmed and out of control. These are normal things that people generally experience when they're going through some kind of transition or emotional trauma. But when you have this chaos going around you, many times it will trigger some deeper issues that may have gone unaddressed. And in the case of people that have previous trauma in their lives, something like domestic violence or sexual assault, or maybe you lost a parent when you were younger, there are lots of stressful things that can cause internal trauma throughout the life course. But I wanted to talk to you about the physiological first and then the emotional dynamics with regard to that trauma. Now the amygdala is the small almond shaped part of your brain that plays a part in your emotion and behavior. It processes fear. It forms the memories of the fear-inducing events. So when, when you experience something that's traumatic to you, the amygdala is responsible for, for recording that event. And it remembers how you experienced that event at that time in your life. Now, this aspect of the brain is overactive in people with anxiety disorders. Now, the reason the amygdala is not necessarily your best friend when you are re-traumatized by life events is because it overrides the executive function of the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is highly developed in that it plays a role in the regulation of complex cognition emotion, and behavioral function. Without the prefrontal cortex fully engaged, our brains can be hijacked by the amygdala, which can at will override the prefrontal cortex. As a result, it hijacks the entire higher functioning aspect of your brain. This can be a sudden, illogical, and irrational overreaction, such as we see many times with people who have post-traumatic stress syndrome. It's an involuntary fight or flight dynamic, and it, as I said, overrides rational thought. Now, the repercussions of stress on your body include reduced immunity. Right now, we all need our immunity intact. It increases your blood pressure, causes weight gain, and it also exacerbates any underlying physiological issues that we might have. We can be re-traumatized. We call that secondary trauma. In other words, what's happening in the here and now, yes, everybody on earth may be experiencing that. But for those of us that have previous trauma in our lives or abuse of some kind, or we've experienced some kind of major loss in our lives, then we can be thrown back into that trauma based on current events. When that occurs, it's like we're getting snatched back to the past by a big rubber band. 
In other words, I'm in the here and now. Yes, I am experiencing what's going on in the world, okay? Or maybe something new happens in my personal life. That's a challenge. But in that moment, I become prisoner to what happened in my past. So I'm not dealing with just the current situation. I'm dealing with the current situation and what occurred in the past. And it's a split second thing where you begin to react to the current situation based on something you experienced in the past. And you are, for all intents and purposes, sitting in your past dealing with the here and now. And the reason why this is not good is because when you're caught up in that dynamic, it be becomes very difficult to have a realistic view of the current event. And if you're reacting to a 2020 event based on a 1979 experience, then it's totally maladaptive and it's not helping you in this moment. Now, the strategy, how to fight back. I'm just doing what I know. I'm doing what you taught me. I never taught you to be a thief. No, you taught me to navigate people's minds. I can access your mind through your dreams. It's called Inception. How do we get out? I'm hoping you have something more elegant in mind than shooting me in the head. A kick. What's a kick? That feeling of falling, it snaps you out of the dream. This would be a kick. Building a dream from your memory is the easiest way to lose your grasp on what's real and what is a dream. Is that what happened to you? You gotta draw from stuff you know, right? It's pure creation. There's nothing quite like it. If you're gonna perform Inception, you need imagination. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. Did the children miss me? can't imagine. The seed that we plant in this man's mind will change everything. This can't be done. Dreams within dreams is too unstable. It is possible. God, we should walk away from this. The people that hired us won't accept failure. Not a part of the plan. Inception. What's happening? His subconscious is looking for the dreamer. Me? Quick, give me a kiss. They're still looking at us. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Ready PG-13 in theaters and IMAX, July 16th. Inception. This movie has so many hidden gems for anyone that's dealing with chaos that's out of their control and maybe re-traumatization. I have watched this movie over and over and over again because they go back into the subconscious through dreams. So they put the, I'll call it a victim, and they put the target into this deep sleep subconscious state. They meet the target there. They learn about subconscious matters within that subject, okay, the target, and then they implant thoughts, subconscious thoughts that that target will implement in their lives after they wake up. Now they wake up totally unaware that this whole thing has happened. And they're totally unaware that they're operating under some false implantation. And in that situation, your mind is the scene of the crime. This is the same dynamic that occurs in us when the amygdala takes over our conscious higher thought. And so we're going to learn different things from this movie to show you how to take control of your own mind when trauma and fear and chaos tries to overtake you. 
when fear and anxiety have been extracted and incepted into your mind, extraction and inception, that's putting them under, learning what their subconscious thoughts are, supplanting the subconscious thought and making that thought take over the living awake life of the individual requires that in this movie, they extract what's there and they accept or add in or plant what they need, need that subject to do. And your past is the culprit. In Inception, there's a whole team of people that concoct this whole dream state and the architecture of that dream state and they implant that thing. It's it, mission impossible, a psychological mission impossible. But in our lives, in the real life, our past is the culprit. And we are the targets. So your past has manufactured a false world and brought you into that false world. That wor world feels completely real but only as long as you are in it. You don't have to stay in it, but if you're unaware of how this works, then you will be in it completely unaware. Inception, your past has implanted an idea into your subconscious mind. It rules you without your knowing it. In this movie, DiCaprio's character says, what's the most resilient parasite? A bacteria? A virus? An intestinal worm? An idea. Once an idea is taken hold in the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. A person can cover it up, ignore it, but it stays there. See, an idea is like a virus, highly contagious, and an idea can grow. The smallest seed of an idea can grow to define or destroy your world. A simple thought that changes everything. I'm going to teach you how to be the master counter extractor in your own mind. It doesn't matter how many times you've been taken on this roller coaster ride by something in the past that overtakes you in a given moment. I'm going to teach you how to be the master counter extractor of those subconscious hijacking fears and thoughts so that you can function at your highest in any given moment. The subject's mind can always trace the genesis of the idea. So in Inception, they know that if they are in this dream state, they lose themselves. So even though they're on this mission, they can lose themselves within somebody else's dream. And so one of the things that the characters say is that if you're sitting in a dream and you're wondering, Am I dreaming? Am I not dreaming? Am I on the mission? Am I not on the mission? They say that if you cannot trace back the beginning of any given idea that you have, then you are generally probably within some such subconscious state that's a part of the mission. Because it's saying here, you can always trace the beginning of an idea. And that's where we're going to begin to do. We're going to trace the beginnings of the thought that has been incepted by our past, okay? We're running out of time here, but if you click the link below, you'll learn how to become the master counter extractor when your mind becomes the scene of the crime. You're going to learn about the kick, the power of the totem, the secret command center, and the RIP strategy to lay ineffective any times that triggers or the past come and try to hijack your life. I'm Dr. Linda F. Williams. Always remember that your greatest power is realized in the truth of who you are. Know that truth. Hey, if you like what you see here today, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you know when we upload, and like and share the video. Thanks.